The Into the Light event is in full force, and if you're looking for some builds to take into Onslaught, I'm going to be making a in-depth series here on the channel. Completing Legend Onslaught can be fairly difficult, and I want to give you and your fire team the tools you need to make it easy. For my initial run, we had a Sunbracer's Warlock on top of an Orpheus Rig Hunter, and I decided to hop on the Stasis Warlock, and to be honest, it is perfect for crowd control, which is something you really need for this activity. Let's not waste any time and dive right into it. I'm actually going to give you two setups for this build, one that strictly focuses on the Cold Snap Grenade, and one that focuses on the Aspect, which is the Bleak Watcher. But first, we're going to talk about the Exotic, which is going to be the Osmiomancy Gloves. With this perk, Fervored Cold Snap, your Cold Snap Grenades have an additional charge that recharges quicker on direct impact. The Seeker spawn from Cold Snap Grenades travels farther. This essentially means that if there's a group of enemies and your Cold Snap Grenade hits a bunch of them, you get that grenade back very quickly. Now, unfortunately, the Bleak Watcher can't take direct advantage of this, but there are other ways to get the Bleak Watcher back extremely quickly, which is what we're going to cover. Now, under the Shade Binder subclass, I know a lot of people don't like Winter's Wrath, but I think for this activity, it is perfect for that crowd control aspect, and it allows you to freeze those major enemies that could be in your way if you need to take a capture point, like a bomb or anything like that. It's really good for those invisible marauders as well. For abilities, I'm going with the Healing Rift here with Burst Glide, but you can use what you like. For the melee, we only have the one which is penumbral blast again that'll freeze targets on direct hits and obviously we're going with the cold snap grenade for aspects definitely toss on ice flare bolt so shattering a frozen target spawns seekers that track and freeze other nearby targets it's essentially the cold snap grenade perk without using the cold snap grenade so as long as you freeze a target destroy him it'll freeze other targets around you now from here i'm going to show you the bleak watcher setup which is obviously going to be the second aspect we're going to use here so press and hold your grenade button to convert your grenade into a stasis turret that fires slowing projectiles at nearby targets the cool thing here is that slow can stun those overload champs and once they're frozen you can actually stun those unstoppable champions this is extremely good for crowd control for our fragments first up i like whisper of refraction so defeating slowed or frozen targets grants you class ability energy so any damage that my bleak watcher does that the ice flare bolts do anything like that i get my healing rift back faster which is going to be good for support overall next whisper of shards now i would only use this this season in particular so shattering a stasis crystal temporarily boosts your grenade recharge rate shattering additional stasis crystals increases the duration of this benefit and you're like david none of these are going to spawn stasis crystals how do we do it well, if you look under the artifact, Pillar of Ice, defeating a frozen target spawns a stasis crystal. So any target that's frozen and they die, that's a free stasis crystal right down there. And that can also freeze targets that are in the vicinity of it. And with Hail of the Storm, it comes with two things. So shattering frozen targets and stasis crystals deals increased damage, which that pretty much gives us Whisper of Fissures right here. So when you defeat, you know, a frozen target or stasis crystal, you have increased damage. So you pretty much get that for free with this artifact perk. But shattering stasis crystals releases shards of ice that damage and slow targets. So not only do you get the increased shatter damage, but you also get free slow procs whenever you destroy a stasis crystal. Now for the Bleak Watcher setup, the other two fragments. First up, Whisper of Torment. You gain grenade energy each time you take damage from targets. This is a horde mode activity. You're going to be bombarded by <laughs> a lot of enemies. So the faster we can get that grenade back, the better. And then secondly, Whisper of Chain. So while you're near frozen targets or a friendly stasis crystal, you take reduced damage from targets. It is a plus 10 to recovery. And if you did want to switch this one out, I would recommend Whisper of Durance. So slow that you apply to targets last longer. For those abilities that linger, their duration will also increase. This does give you a plus 10 to strength. Now for the second setup, if you wanted to use the Cold Snap Grenade by itself without the Bleak Watcher, that is totally fine. There is a very good setup here. For my abilities, I'm still using the Healing Rift with Burst Glide, Pernumble Blast, and obviously the Cold Snap Grenade. For Aspects, I'm still using Ice Flare Bolts, but I switched Bleak Watcher for Glacial Harvest. So freezing targets create stasis shards around the frozen targets. Higher tier combatants create more shards. Now, this is going to be important for the fragments. I'm still using Whisper of Refraction and shards to take advantage of Pillar of Ice and Hail of the Storm. But the other two fragments, first up, Whisper of Conduction. Nearby stasis shards track to your position. We get a plus 10 to resilience and intellect here. So any of those shards that get created automatically track to you. And with Whisper of Rhyme, collecting stasis shards grants a small amount of overshield, which falls off after 10 seconds. Collecting additional shards adds to the overshield and refreshes the timer. So as long as you're consistently freezing targets, you're getting free overshield tracked to you and if you pick up these stasis shards, you get melee energy, which is pretty cool. Now, outside of the Pillar of Ice and Hail the Storm perks, we are going to take advantage of the solar portions with the solar weapons because we do get some cool bonuses here. So first up, go ahead and toss on Flame, Fiber, and Free so we can put that solar stasis siphon mod on the helmet. Next, 
definitely put on flint striker this is the big one so those rapid solar weapon precision hits and final blows give us radiant and that's how we can pop anti-barrier shields with any weapon as long as it doesn't have you know a previous champion mod on it but with radiant we get some other bonuses here first up being kindling trigger so radiant causes solar weapons to apply scorch to unscorched combatants with torch here while we're radiant we deal increased weapon damage to combatants affected by strand and stasis debuffs and as you could tell with this warlock we're gonna have a lot of slow and a lot of freeze on the field and as long as we're radiant it's literally free weapon damage I also really like raised precision here. So while we're radiant, solar precision final blows cause combatants to ignite. So that's a free ignition on a headshot. And again, if the target is frozen, they die. That's a stasis crystal. You do it again, that'll shatter the crystal automatically too. So this is a really good tool for crowd control. I also really like Wish into Being, so while your super is nearly fully charged, ability final blows spawn orbs of power, pretty much free orbs when you're close to your super, and then Dragon's Bite. Breaking a combatant's shield with a strand or stasis weapon, which I am going to be using a stasis weapon here, it has a chance to suspend or freeze that combatant. It basically has a chance to automatically cause that freeze proc, which then we can, you know, proc pillar vice and then hail the storm. Now let's cover the armor mods, starting with the helmet. Again, like I said, we are using the solar stasis combo siphon mod. So when we get those rapid final blows, we get orbs of power. And then I put on heavy ammo finder and scout again this is going to be good for us and our teammates in case we need heavy ammo during the activity on the gauntlets i am using momentum transfer and double impact inductions when i cause damage with my grenade and my melee i get cooldowns for both of those respectively obviously with impact induction i get more of a grenade cooldown when i use my melee here but if you did want to switch out an impact induction for a solar loader again depending on whatever general armor mod you have here you could put on solar loader because we are going to be using solar weapons like i mentioned and having a faster reload in a horde mode activity does have good implications. On the chest piece, I'm using solar reserves in an arc and void resistance, but honestly, you can change out these resistance mods, you know, for whichever ones that you like. And I still like solar reserves, so I have more solar heavy ammo. On the boots here, I am using recuperation, so I get health back each time I pick up an orb of power, which is gonna be good for a mode like Onslaught. And then I am using double solar weapon surge here, so your solar weapons gain a small bonus to damage while you have any armor charge. Your armor charge now decays over time. You gain armor charges by collecting orbs of power. With this build, you can have three armor charges, and so that means we get 30 seconds of this bonus weapon damage at three charges. Each charge lasts 10 seconds, so keep that in mind. Now, what you could do here if you are using the Bleak Watcher setup is switch out one of these solar weapon surges for innervation, so it reduces grenade cooldown each time you pick up an orb of power. It's not absolutely necessary, but if you want more Bleak Watchers on the field, this is going to be a way to do it. And then lastly on the class item, I like time dilation so that decaying armor charge has a longer duration. Like I mentioned, normally it's 10 seconds, but with this, it's 15 seconds per armor charge. So that means we get 45 seconds of that solar bonus weapon damage, which is fantastic. And then I personally like double bomber. So it reduces my grenade cooldown when I use my class ability. This is good in case you don't have your next bleak watcher up, or if for some reason you run out of cold snap grenades, if you toss it and all the ads disappear or whatever, so you don't get the direct hits. But another option is you could switch out one of these bombers for powerful attraction. So it automatically collects nearby orbs of power when you activate your class ability. So you get that free healing from recuperation and also armor charges when you collect them. So this is not a bad mod. For stats to focus on, we talk about every video, try to have tier 10 100 resilience. That 30% damage reduction, especially in Onslaught, is gonna be absolutely necessary. And then the second one I'd focus on is discipline. Discipline is tied to how fast we can get that grenade cooldown, especially for the Bleak Watcher. We want it back as quickly as possible. With the regular cold snap with Osmiomancy, you can still get it back pretty quickly, but regardless, you want it back as quickly as possible. For your weapon options in the primary slot, I would recommend a fusion rifle that could come with the perk chill clip. Again, direct hits with the top half of the magazine cause a detonation that slows nearby targets. This is very important because this pretty much allows you to handle those overload champions. And while you're radiant, again, with Flint Striker, you could also handle anti-barrier champions with a fusion rifle like this. So if you have a Riptide or Deliverance that can come with chill clip, that is a good option. If you want some exotic options, I have two here. First up being Conditional Finality. Again, being able to take advantage of both the Stasis and Solar portions of the artifact with just this one weapon is great. And as long as you hit every pellet on an Unstoppable Champion, it will stun them with either the Freeze or the Ignition portion. So Conditional is fantastic. Another exotic option would be the Aegis Scepter. So final blows with the weapon generate a slowing burst around the defeated target. We also have Arrowhead Break with Particle Repeater and Hand Laid Stock. Then it's Trait Perk, Regus Refrain, Stasis Final Blows, transfer ammo to this weapon's magazine from reserves. Again, we're on the Stasis subclass. We're gonna be putting out a lot of Stasis. So this weapon will reload itself automatically which is pretty cool but with the catalyst we do have an interesting interaction here so if you didn't want to use the super what you can do 
is you can hold your reload button, it'll drain your super energy, overflowing the magazine and empowering the beam with bonus damage and the ability to slow and freeze targets until the magazine or super energy runs out or the weapon is stowed can only be activated when super energy is full. So if you need to have a very powerful beam with Aider Scepter, that will be fantastic with this setup. In the energy slot, I would highly recommend Sunshot if you have it, because this thing is fantastic, especially with the buffs that happened a while back. Hand cannons feel really good in PvE, and Sunshot is no exception. The weapon fires explosive rounds and highlights targets that take damage from Sunshot. We also have Chamber Compensator with accurized rounds and texture grip, but it's perk, which is Sunblast. Targets defeated with Sunshot explode in solar energy, scorching other nearby targets. And then his catalyst just gives bonuses to range instability. But this weapon is perfect for crowd control. As long as you get one kill, it usually kills everything else around it as well. And that will proc Flint Striker. You can also get Race Precision, so you get a headshot. Not only do you get the Sunblast Explosion, but you also get an Ignition on top of that. It's just way too good for crowd control. Also, I like Sunshot because it can handle Unstoppable Champions with the mod this season. But if you didn't want to use Sunshot, there are plenty of other just legendary weapon options. Again, you have the Summoner has incandescent Kallus mini tool obviously a classic incandescent the epichal integration hand cannon that has incandescent if you have abyss defiant with incandescent i mean even at hortative with heel clip incandescent i am saving this for a different build but pretty much any weapon that could come with incandescent you're good with you know with the summoner in particular with it being an auto rifle you could put on you know overload auto rifle you also have overload pulse rifle for <laughs> any type of pulse rifle so you have multiple options here. I just personally like Sunshot. In the heavy slot, you can honestly use whatever your favorite solar heavy weapon is. Again, I have this avalanche here with rewind rounds and target lock. This thing is fantastic for single target damage and for those DPS options just in case. If you needed a rocket, again, definitely craft Apex Predator if you haven't. Recon bait and switch. There's also other perk options. If you wanted something more precision, again, there's linear fusions. You have Cataclysmic, Briar's Contempt, stuff like that. If you wanted to use an exotic option, Dragon's Breath is really good, not only for that single target damage, but also being able to take out a crowd of enemies. And especially with being able to freeze a bunch of targets, if there's a tougher target and a bunch of enemies spawn around them, not only am I gonna be freezing them, creating stasis crystals, causing ignitions, <laughs> like it, it's just extremely good for crowd control as well. Whether you choose the Bleak Watcher or the Cold Snap Grenade options for this build, you're going to be a huge help to your team in the crowd control department. And with everything I gave you, you're going to have a really fast grenade cooldown and be able to handle pretty much every type of champion with no matter what weapons you're going to use here. But that, ladies and gentlemen, are my Onslaught Stasis Warlock builds. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm actually going to put both the Bleak Watcher and Cold Snap Grenade build dim links in the description so if you want to copy everything that i'm using down to the subclass the armor mods the weapons even the drip if you'd like i try to make my you know guardians look fairly drippy so if you want to copy all that stuff and test off for yourself and then adjust it to your heart's content please do so if there's something that you like using with this setup definitely let me know in the comments in any event if what you saw is valuable or entertaining to you be sure to drop a like on the video subscribe to the channel and turn on that bell next to notification so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming onslaught builds i'm going to be dropping on the channel if you didn't know we live stream here on youtube but also on twitch and tiktok as well so if you want help with legend onslaught with the whisper mission with zero hour anything that has to deal with this into light event we're definitely going to be carrying people throughout the entirety of the event so if you do want some help hop in the chat we'll get you in the queue but if you want to be proactive join my discord that's where people are going to be chatting about destiny 2 looking for groups i made an onslaught lfg role so if you're looking to do onslaught and get some other people in to help you again that's going to be a really good way to do that lastly if you want to help support the channel even more so i can continue making content for you guys you can look into becoming a member if you don't know what a membership is it's essentially like a twitch subscription but it's cheaper than a twitch subscription hilariously enough in any event you're going to get access to exclusive emotes monthly badges and other cool things here on the channel like early access to every single one of my videos so if you want more information all you have to do is press the join button next subscribe and that'll give you a rundown with all the details you need. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's been your boy. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.